Welcome to the Blockchain Report. We discuss all things blockchain technology, digital assets, DeFi, NFTs, and much more. Today's video, we're diving into another round of the Certic Skynet quests. Um, we have some boost edition ones, and we have a couple more uh, lower level uh, quests to do. So we'll complete these and uh, try and get all of the boosted quests done and all of these level seven ones and three ones as well. So before we actually get started, thank you so much for joining. Please like, subscribe, comment, share this out to anyone you think would be interested in blockchain technology, all the fun stuff we get to learn and cool rewards we earn along the way. And I don't know if Certic is gonna launch a token or not, but these are some cool quests to learn about safety and security in Web3. So it is somewhat important to understand some of this or at least get some exposure to this because even if, if you haven't been following recently even those of us who have been in the game a long time um are are not immune to hacks and and phishing scams and i see a lot of people today with the layer zero airdrop that got hacked and scammed from phishing links so it's definitely good to to learn about this but if you ever have any questions or comments or video recommendations, please jump in the Discord. Link is in the description below. You can get in there and connect with me and other people in the community. We will help you grow along in this space with us. And get your questions answered in a faster amount of time than you can on YouTube. So, with that, let's dive in and uh, get some of these boosted edition ones going. So, Sky Insights. Sky Knight identifying and avoiding phishing scams in X replies. Yeah, that's another one that's been uh, really, really terrible is, is phishing links on X. And you, they're doing a better job by posting little verifications. Um, okay. On X to show if it's a scammer or not. I thought I was logged in already. Start quest. There we go. So this kind of goes into crypto compliance. Uh, the goal is to prevent money laundering, fraud, and tax evasion by having customers complete KYC and anti-money laundering measures. Um, and if you don't know, crypto regulation in the U.S. is really screwed up due to the government regulatory bodies. So it looks like Sky Insights are um, sorry, I was looking at something else. So the Sky Insights is a compliant and risk assessment platform. It helps organizations in the crypto and blockchain sectors manage and mitigate risk. So it identifies and verifies wallet addresses to ensure compliance, monitors transactions for suspicious activity, and this will be good for compromised wallets. I might I might check this out. So that would be good. Sky Insights. Yeah, so assess asset movement tracking and tracing. Sky Insights. Boom. We're going to look at that. So what's the primary objective of Sky Insights for crypto AML? To identify and analyze suspicious activities. Which regulatory body in the USA registers all money services business all money services businesses dealing with convertible CFTC? I don't know. Oh, FinCEN. I don't know FinCEN. So which of the following are key features of Sky Insights? Asset moving, entity, customizable case management audit trails, maybe? Yeah. Great job. Great job. So Sky Knight is the next one. And I'm going to save this. 
my crypto bookmark folder and I'll come back to that. So Skynet or Sky Knight. Sky Knight. I actually didn't want to close that last one. So Sky Knight is a security tool designed specifically for meme coins. So you can see more insights into meme coins and if the token is safe to trade, if the devs own most of the the token, so it's it's good to yeah, see if what you're investing in is um is going to be okay for the short term. And meme coins should only be traded for short term purposes. So what are key features of Skynet? Sorry, the last one was uh, trading meme coins. Um, deep analysis of smart code contract and, co uh, and comprehensive reporting. Who can benefit from using Skynet? Investors and developers. Great job. So identifying and avoiding phishing scams in X replies. This one is one that everybody should should take note of. So June 9th, a user on platform X reported losing over 400k of Maneki tokens. Um yeah. This is a, fa a fraudulent airdrop website linked in a reply under the project's official tweet. So scammers will post under a, a comment under the tweet and it'll be a little bit different username. So be aware that even if it's the legitimate project, you gotta look at, are they sending you know, is their username the same as this, the Ionet, Ecolora, whatever that is? Yeah, you, you're not going to, you got to make sure that, and don't trust gold check accounts on X. Um, yeah, they, they can take over a scammer exploit by taking over accounts with gold checks. And never click links from Twitter posts. Make sure you go to the, the project's website. So which of the following statements are correct? Scammers use uh, choose all. Display names can be misused to impersonate official accounts. Gold checks, no. Scammers disguise themselves using accounts on X. Oh. Hmm. That's interesting. So is it not? It's not all of them. Oh, identical usernames. I'm sorry. I misread that. So this is the first and last one. In the Maneki incident, what deceptive methods did the scammer use to trick? Um, very similar username. Oh. And the same display name. So which of the following is not true about the end of thread practice? Um, scam messages may potentially appear before the end of thread message. That's not true. Oh. Yeah, user... Oh. They can always trust messages prior to the end of thread. Yeah, because sometimes the other project, or the the hackers or scammers can can gamify that. So it's not always trusted, but 
just be vigilant, be on your P's and Q's. So CoreDAO, you're going to learn about CoreDAO, infrastructure project developing and managing the core blockchain ecosystem. <clears throat> so unique to CoreChain is the Satoshi Plus consensus mechanism, combining proof of work and proof of stake, leveraging Bitcoin security, all that fun stuff, security audits of Ethereum smart contracts and self-hosted bug bounty programs. I haven't used core too much. I've used it on Polyhedra a bit. So core DAO combines delegated proof of stake and proof of work. Oops. True. What ensures the scalability and security of core DAO's blockchain? Satoshi plus consensus mechanism. There we go. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, bum. And then we'll move on to Skynet rating. Set up your Skynet username. I wonder why this hasn't been done yet. But we'll do it anyways. Go ahead and get this. So you can choose your Username. I thought I set this one up. Okay. So we'll go to my profile. And edit username. Boom. The blockchain report. We verified. There you go. That one was easy. Oh, it kicked me out for some reason. Okay, we got a bunch of level 10s. I'll go through a couple of these. So, hacked <clears throat> part one. We'll go ahead and uh, knock this round out. So hacked is the industry's first, uh, industry's most comprehensive record of statistics and analysis of on-chain security incidents. So you can access different features, and look at, analyze different security incidents from different hacks and exit scams. So which of the following is not listed as a top incident and that's network congestion. What was the eventual outcome of the attack on Munchables? The stolen assets were returned. What event occurred shortly before BitForex exit scam raising suspicions of fraudulent activity? Drop in trading volume, no security breach. A regulatory, nope, CEO's resignation, that's suspicious. That would uh, make me wonder what's going on. So, hacked part two, private key compromised. And this is where I'm facing issues as my keys were compromised. So, Q1 losses soared to $239 million. So much higher this year than last year. Um, just kind of covering different scenarios and stuff that happened. Uh, what was the total loss attributed to private key compromises? 239 million. Who suffered a loss of 112 million? Uh, Chris Larson. No. CZ?
Honestly, I didn't really read it. Why didn't it let me? It's not letting me hit it. <laughs> okay, let's see. There. Brian Armstrong. It's not letting me do it. Oh, that was... So I did Chris Larson the first time, and it didn't take it. That's weird. So storing all multi-signature keys within the same Bitwarden account is a secure practice. False. You don't want to store all your keys in one place. So this last one, rounding uh, issue exploits. So now new kinds of exploits targeting lending pools, um, primarily affecting pools in an uninitialized state. So this happened recently with, uh, who is it? Um, Velicor, I think, on, on Linea. So we have, so what is the primary target of rounding issues on exchanges? newly deployed lending pools. What was the outcome of the flaw exploited in the Kyber swap incident? Drains funds. And Solidity's computational libraries are designed for high precision mathematical operations, minimizing the risk of rounding errors. Is that true? Nope. Wait, how can... But that's weird. Neither of those worked. So is this an issue of this being, let's try it again. I don't know what's up with this, but we got some funkiness going on. Okay. And I think that will be it for today. I think I got all of these done. I got some other stuff I got to take care of, but yeah, hopefully this helped. Um, and make sure that you are taking security highly, highly important because you don't want to have to go through what I've been dealing with with my, my compromised wallet. So please make sure you you take this and and try and understand as best you can. If you do have any other questions, please jump in the Discord. Link is in the description below, and I will be happy to help. But with that, this is the Blockchain Report. Have a wonderful day, homies. Peace.